What is it that must precede the conveying of history? Must there not be the declaration of a double passion, an eros for the past and an ardor for the others in whose name there is a felt urgency to speak? To convey that which was in the light of this passion is to become a historian. Because the past is irrecoverable and the others in whose stead the historian speaks are dead, unknowable, she cannot hope that her passion will be reciprocated. To be a historian, then, is to accept the destiny of the spurned lover, to write, photograph, film, televise, archive, and simulate the past, not merely as its memory bank, but as binding oneself to a promise to the dead to tell the truth about the past. Nietzsche may have been right in proclaiming that remembering the past is a sick passion, yet without the necrophilia of the historian who gives herself over to overcoming the past's passing into oblivion, there would be only the finality of death. Qui suis-je? Si par exception, who am I? If this once I were to rely on a proverb, then perhaps everything would amount to knowing whom I haunt. I must admit that this last word is misleading, tending to establish between certain beings and myself relations that are stranger, more inescapable, more disturbing than I intended. Such a word means much more than it says, makes me, still alive, play a ghostly part, evidently referring to what I must have ceased to be in order to be who I am. Fait allusion à ce qu'il a fallu que je cessasse d'être pour être qui je suis. Hi, Allison. This is Anne Adeline. I was delighted to get your letter and very uh, willing to comply with your request. I started already doing some of it, but instead of chatting now, I'll try and get you maybe this evening. I'll see if I can get you. But uh, it's a work that started in progress, so we'll talk later. I hope you're well. Take care. Bye now. And I don't know why we are together, dear ghosts, or why we have to part, only that it is precious and that I love this rundown subject. I had promised myself that as we drove out of the town and back up the little hill, I would turn around. Turn around for the reason we always turn around to stare at what lies behind us, which is to make an impossible wish, a wish that nothing will be left behind, that we will carry the imprint of what is over and done with into the present and future. I told myself that I'd look through the back window and stare at the little town as it receded, because I wanted to be able to remember not only what the place looked like when you were arriving there, but what it looked like when you were leaving it forever. Sometimes a glory is just that, a guessing into the scene, noticing the fringe of presence when it comes, trying to match its fervency by something as tangible, something only you are equal to.